in this trig equation, we're given a cubic function, a cubic cosine function, and say, and it says, you know, negative 12 cosine cubed equals negative 3 cosine. And because everything is in terms of cosines, if you want, you can do a u substitution in here. Uh, u equals cosine, right? Cosine of that angle omega. And that allows you to write this in the following way. Negative 12 u cubed equals negative 3 u. Now, that may not look any better to you, or it may. Um, remember, this is a voluntary technique. You can use u substitution if you like it. But I might then say to myself, well, I've got u cubed terms and u terms. Maybe I can get everything over to one side and start factoring, because, you know, factoring is almost always a good idea. So I'm going to move the 12 u cubed over to the other side by adding it to both sides. And now I come up with the following. And now we start factoring. So 0 equals, uh, I see a GCF of 3. I see a GCF of u. And what's left? I'm going to have 4u squared minus 1. OK? Now, at this point, if you were doing u substitution, it would be a good idea to switch back to non-u. Well, I, I think we actually we could go a little further if you want. Uh, I just realized we could factor this thing over here. 2u plus 1 and 2u minus 1. Remember your difference of squares for trinomial factors. Now, now we really are at the end of the road because look at our solutions. u equals 0, negative 1 half, and positive 1 half from each of those parentheses in order. Do we all remember? I hope we remember how to do this stuff. Um, it might have been a while since you've been doing equations, so I just want to point this out to you in, in detail. The way you solve one of these parentheses is you say 2u plus 1 equals 0, okay? Because all the numbers multiplied together make 0, so I know each one has to be 0. That means 2u equals negative 1. That means u equals negative 1 half, okay? So that's how that happens. Now, these are my three solutions, but remember, we weren't trying to solve for u. We were trying to solve for cosine of omega. So that gives me this. Cosine of omega equals 0 and plus or minus 1 half. Well, now it's time to go to your unit circle, which is like every single trig problem that you're going to do. Where does the cosine, in other words, the x value, equal 0 or plus or minus 1 half? Well, the zeros are easy. Okay, I know there are zero values for x right along the y-axis. And then for plus and minus 1 half, well... One half is not a big amount. I know that's pretty close to the y-axis, a little to either side. Um, and here are all the values. So now we just have to figure out what all these angles are in here. And if you remember your unit circle visually, that's what I recommend. Um, this becomes a pretty easy process. Uh, let's see, we've got pi over 3. That's the first angle right here. Okay, then we have pi over 2. That's this guy right there. And what's next? Uh, looks like 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3, and I'm running out of space. 3 pi over 2, uh, forget it, I'm just going to the next line, and 5 pi over 3. So kind of a long list, but that is kind of how these problems tend to go sometimes. You might have one answer, you might have four answers for angles, you might have six answers for angles. So... Just get used to thinking, thinking about them in that way.